And that's because my hormones went absolutely wackadoodle out of nowhere, completely crazy. It was so bad. I'm on the heaviest day of my cycle, so it feels like a very fitting time to sit down and discuss my PMDD diagnosis and treatment, my hormone issues and treatment, my whole journey. This has been my most requested video for quite some time now since I mentioned in this video that I am being treated for PMDD. Even just for years, as I've mentioned here and there, my hormone treatment and hormone imbalance issues, people are like, can you talk about it? Can you talk about it? Can you talk about it? And I think it's because so many people deal with this or with similar issues of their own and it is such a difficult journey. It is such a difficult thing to navigate. So I do really want to talk about it because I feel like this is a resource that I would really appreciate having. That said, I'm a little hesitant only because I'm not a I'm not an expert. I'm not a professional. I might get stuff wrong. Okay, don't believe me, a random girl on the internet. Talk to your doctor, go see a specialist. If I get things wrong, feel free to kindly and politely correct me. I'm not getting it wrong to be malicious or spread misinformation. I'm just a girl who deals with these things. I'm not an expert. Um, I'm also gonna try my best to use gender neutral language throughout this conversation because I believe that that's really important when discussing uh, hormone issues and cycle issues, period issues, because they can affect people who identify with all different forms of gender. Uh, but if I do end up defaulting to female language, I do apologize in advance, so let's just get into it. So I started puberty uh, very young. At the time, I was considered to be at the like very early end um, of starting puberty. I started developing breasts at eight years old, uh, started wearing like a training bra, sports bra at that age, and then got my period at 11. Um, I was the first girl to start wearing a bra in my class and I was the first girl to get my period. So I was definitely on the early side. Uh, from my understanding now, 20 years later, that's actually kind of around average for girls. Uh, but when I was that age, that was considered young. And it was definitely surprising, I think, to a lot of people, including my doctor, because I am very petite. I was also the smallest girl in my class. And for some reason, there was always this idea that like, oh, the bigger girls get it first because they're somehow more mature because they're taller. I don't know, but uh, I was definitely very young and I don't remember much. I remember getting my period for the first time, but I don't remember much about my period for those first kind of three years where I do start to remember distinctly experiencing issues with my period was around 14 when for a period of time I stopped getting my cycle. Uh, I can't remember exactly how long it was no more than a year that I stopped having a cycle. It happened for a variety of reasons. Um, I was going through a lot at that time and basically my body was like, you know what? We're gonna shut down functions that are unnecessary for survival and my cycle was unnecessary. So she said goodbye for a little bit. We worked to get my cycle back. At that time, I did get hormone testing and I showed that I was very high in estrogen. My estrogen levels were higher than they should have been. So from a very young age, I have been known to deal with hormone imbalances. At 15 years old, I experienced my first ovarian cyst rupture. My, I was home alone with my brother, had him call an ambulance, went to the ER, is the whole thing. I have since experienced ovarian cysts frequently over the past 15 years of my life. I have been to the hospital numerous times with them. I've had many, transvaginal ultrasounds, external ultrasounds. So it's something I've dealt with a lot. And ever since I got my period back at like late 14, early 15, I've just had issues. It was never regular. And like I said, I don't really recall much about my period from 11 to 14. So I don't know if it ever was regular, but I know for sure from like 15 on, it was never regular. I saw different people, different specialists, uh, because I would go through periods of dealing with like extreme, extreme, extreme pain. Um, and just, it was just never easy. My cycle was never normal or easy. It was always challenging. And I would go through periods where, okay, the next two years, it's gonna be like really severe pain. Then for the next two years, it's gonna be XYZ issues. Um, and then through my mid twenties, I continued to be irregular, continued to get ovarian cysts and always had what I would consider pretty extreme PMS. My PMS would typically be 14 days long, 10 on the low end. Like if I only had 10 days of PMS symptoms, 
I was grateful. It was typically 14 days. And those PMS symptoms included extreme breast tenderness, bad acne, extreme hunger, extreme cravings, fatigue, uh, sleep disruption, either being really tired or not being able to sleep, headaches. However, something I fortunately never really dealt with was mood swings. I never really felt particularly emotional on my cycle or prior to my cycle beginning, or rather during that PMS phase, I never felt tearful, I never really felt irritable, I never felt angry or grumpy. That was the one PMS symptom I never had. But I would always say during that phase of my life, like the mid to late 20s, that I would rather be on my period than be PMSing because that's how annoying my PMS symptoms were. That's how disruptive they felt, is it was just this nuisance. Like I was like, I cannot wait for the feeling of getting my period because even though I'll be crampy for a few days, by that point in my life, my cramps weren't as bad as they were in my late high school years. But I was like, by the time my period comes, like I know I'll feel relief. I'll get like relief from these hormones and the, all these symptoms that they're causing. And about three years ago, I chose to pay out of pocket to go to a private hormone specialty clinic. Uh, they specialized in women's hormones and it was an office that straddled both holistic and traditional medicine, which is something that I'm a big believer in. I think both are really valid and I both have held a really big place in my life, in my health and healing journey. So it was really exciting to me to be able to get help from both sides working together on my hormones. And so I, I've not been on birth control. I can't take hormonal birth control due to the fact that I have protein S deficiency disorder. I've spoke about it in the past in this video here. So I was not on any form of birth control. Um, which was good because in order to do the testing through this clinic, you have to be free of hormonal birth control for six months because they're trying to get a baseline on your body's hormones, not on these synthetic hormones that are in your body that are going to be affecting your hormones. So I was thankfully able to get straight into the hormone testing. Um, the specific test we did, I honestly don't know like the name of the test, I'm sure you could ask your doctor about it um, or Google it and figure it out. I don't know, but basically you do it on the 19th day of your cycle, which was tricky for me because I had an irregular cycle. So I was like, I don't know what day 19 is, but we kind of just guessed it based on like the past previous few months of cycle being like, it'll be maybe around this time. Um, so you are supposed to do it on the 19th day of your cycle and it is a 24 hour urine analysis. So I had a jug that I peed into for 24 hour period and I couldn't consume caffeine and I don't think I could consume alcohol while doing this test. Um, it was then sent out, I got my results back and it was really extensive. It showed a whole bunch of stuff. Um, my estrogen levels at the time were actually close to normal, which was great. My testosterone levels were too high and my progesterone levels were way too low. Um, those results combined with other symptoms of mine, my doctor basically said, you have a lot of the markers for PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, but I'm not going to officially diagnose you with that. So I am not here saying I officially have PCOS, but I have something very similar. A lot of my symptoms are very similar. A lot of what I experience is very similar to that. The path forward for treatment for me at the time, uh, like I said, did combine holistic things, which included uh, a lot of different supplements, including oil cycling, where I would do um, fish oil during the first 14 days of my cycle and evening primrose oil during the last 14 days of my 28 day cycle, along with a whole bunch of other things, my HTP, HTP5? H5TP? H5TP. 5HTP! Yes. I knew it was a combo of those. Was also low, so I started taking that. Um, there was honestly a bunch of stuff. Uh, ashwagandha I started taking. Um, my doctor believed that my stress levels were was playing a big role in my low progesterone. Basically, she called it like hormone stealing, where um, during that last 14 days of my cycle, my cortisol had run out for the month from stress and anxiety. And so my body needed something. And so it started to steal my progesterone levels and deplete my progesterone. I'm just repeating what my doctor said to me. 
So that's that. That's basically what she said. And so I, along with those hormone change or the supplement changes um, and some dietary changes, I also started a progesterone cream. This was not like a natural, you know, uh, holistic one. This was a medicated progesterone cream to basically do hormone replacement therapy, replacing the hormone that I should have been creating naturally but did not have enough of with a synthetic hormone via a hormone cream. And it took a few months of trial and error to get the dosage correct and that's gonna differ for everybody so there's no point in me even sharing my dosage. I'll just say it was a cream that I would get from the pharmacy. It was a really specific medicine, like not every pharmacy can make it so I have to go to like special pharmacies. The what is it? The pure pharmacy? No, so the like mortal and pestle. Yes. You know, they really it's like old school. It's yeah. like a real old school medicine that they that they make. So not everywhere does it. But I would basically apply that to my body um day 14 to 28. Amazing things happened for me. A lot of my symptoms went away. A lot of my PMS symptoms went away. My acne continued, but it wasn't as bad. And I also was regular for like the first time ever, I knew when to actually expect my period, which was so exciting. It was amazing to actually know when I was gonna get my period and not just play this guessing game based on how I'm feeling. It was awesome. So that was really helpful for me for years. It was really great and I was like, oh my God, I wish I knew about this sooner. I wish I'd done this sooner. This is the best thing I could have done for myself. This was worth every penny that I spent going to this private clinic. It was just like a really, really big help for me. And again, I would play around with dosage from time to time um, if I felt like I needed more or needed less. But for the most part, it was consistently working. Um, I had a few blips where for some reason or another, my cycle would be a little late or a little early or my cycle would be a little bit harder than most months. But things like stress, travel, all of those kinds of things can play a component in that. So I didn't think much of it um, until June when I was in Spain. I did this vlog and in that video, I talked about the fact that it was actually like a really, really hard trip for me. And I did not have the fun that I really wanted to have. And that's because my hormones went absolutely wackadoodle out of nowhere, completely crazy. It was so bad. I broke out like I never have before. And that's coming from somebody who has been medicated for acne in the past. I did a six week round of tetracycline at 18 years old for acne. So I've dealt with bad acne in my life. And this was worse than I've ever had. All under here, um, like underneath my chin and underneath my jawline. And then slowly over months, it started creeping up my jaw onto my cheeks and up my face. And they were closed comedones that took months and months and months and months to come out. I did, tried everything seemingly to get rid of them. And at one point, the, quite literally, there was like 50. All under here, this side was the worst. All here, it was so broken out. And for those who don't know, um, a strong indication that it is specifically hormonal acne is that it is like jawline, chin, mouth area for women um, or for people with a uterus and so um, that was where mine was. It was really bad and along with that, something I had never experienced, like I said, really in, in my life, despite all my hormone issues and despite all my issues with my cycle, um, I'd really never experienced severe emotion until June when I was in Spain. I am talking hysterically crying uncontrollably. Like I would just tell my parents, you guys go out for dinner and I would sit in the hotel room and like sob like my life was over. Could not control it. I felt so depressed. Then my period came five days early, which at the time being on my hormone cream, like the odd time that it would be early or late, it was like a day or two. It was not almost a week early or almost a week late. Like that had never happened. So it was really jarring. And I was just so relieved when the period came because I was like, okay, I can kind of start to go back to normal. Over the next few months throughout the rest of the summer and into the fall, I noticed that pattern continue. Not only was the acne present throughout every part of my cycle, and just like I said, so severe because they were closed comedones, it was like really hard to get rid of them. I was getting a lot of deep, deep, deep cystic acne that was taking three or four months just for one to disappear. I was going through this phase where I would feel 
totally normal for two weeks and like absolute hell for two weeks. And I started saying things to friends and family like, I feel like the best version of myself for half the month and then I feel like this person I don't even know for the other half. And I don't understand. I don't want to like live like this where I get to be like so good and then I'm so bad. I started getting a lot of symptoms in those 14 days leading up to that tw day 28, from day 14 to 28, where I was like really moody, really irritable, like really irritable, irrational, depressed, feeling really empty, and having thoughts that I knew I didn't believe. And that was really weird for me. Um, I remember in October, when I was kind of just at, like really at a breaking point, it was just getting really frustrating. And because my hormone cream, my progesterone cream did help me regulate my period, I was able to track very clearly that on the early side, my symptoms were beginning on day 14, on the late side, day 16 to 17, and they were subsiding on, on the early side, day one, on the late side, day three. So I was very clearly tracking that this was connected to my cycle. And I started trying to play around with my hormone dosage again, with my cream, seeing if that was helping, but it wasn't really giving me relief. I was still a bit more irregular with my cycle. Even when it was regular, I was noticing these really, really disruptive emotional swings that were really unusual for me. And I remember coming out to my mom and I was the day before my period was due. And I was like, my brain, feels like my biggest enemy right now because it's telling me things that I know in two days I won't believe. But right now they feel really true to me. I'm telling myself that I'm fat and I'm useless and I'm ugly and I'm not good enough and I'm lazy, just that I'm a horrible person and I'm not gonna accomplish anything in my life and everything's meaningless and nothing I do is good enough. Like it was just telling me all these things that I was like, I know I don't believe that, but I feel like it's true right now. I feel miserable because I don't know how to not feel like that, even though I know none of that, like that's a lie. My brain is lying to me, but it feels true. And so I was self-aware enough to understand that in a few days, when my period had come, the hormones had calmed down, I would go back to feeling like happy, confident, capable, strong, feeling myself. Like I would go back to being like good Molly. And I'm somebody who has been on SSRIs for anxiety in the past. I know what depressed Molly feels like and I know what anxious Molly feels like. I knew that I wasn't depressed and I knew that I wasn't anxious because during day like three to 16, I was on top of the world. I was energetic, I was good, I was happy, I was loving, I was outgoing. And then during these like 17 to day three, I was like, don't touch me, don't talk to me, I don't wanna do that. Like I was a different person. It was two distinctly different per people. And I knew that one of them is me and one of them isn't, but I don't know how to be me all the time. Eventually I got to a breaking point where it was affecting a lot of things in my life including my relationships around me because I knew that I wasn't a very nice person to be around during those moments. And it was really hard on, on not only me, and I didn't want to live like that anymore, but it was now hard on people around me and I didn't want to be that person to people around me anymore. And that's when I made an appointment with my doctor to share my symptoms. Going into this, I had a strong suspicion that it was PMDD because I played around with my hormone dosage and that had not helped. So I had two goals going into it. One, to tell her my symptoms without telling her my suspicion. Because I'm not the doctor, I'm gonna trust her with her expert opinion to come to her own conclusions. And I will believe that until I'm given reason not to. Number two, to pursue getting my hormones retested because I have not had them tested in about three years. I would like to make sure that things haven't changed given I have been on hormone treatment for three years. So basically, I told her everything. And again, because I was able to pinpoint exactly the dates of my hormonal changes, um, like my internal suspicion, she basically was immediately like, you are classic PMDD. And I was like, okay, what do we do about that? And she basically told me that my best treatment option was Prozac, which is an SSRI. Now my concern going into it was that I would have to be on an SSRI all of the time I wasn't thrilled about that idea because I'm not against SSRIs. Like I said, I've been on them twice in my life for relatively long periods of time, once for about a year, year and a half, and once for about three years. So I by no means was against it, but I felt no need to take a pill every day 
that would impact my mood and personality when half of the time I felt like the very best version of myself that I've literally ever been. She told me that I didn't have to. If I felt good during half of the month, I only needed to take it on the days that I felt like I needed it, which could be anywhere from 10 to 14 days of the month. And then I just go off of it. No need to taper because I was going to be on the lowest dose. So she recommended for me that Prozac is the number one best choice for PMDD treatment, um, which from my research seems to be true. Uh, now I do have friends whose doctors put them on other treatments before trying Prozac, and they unfortunately did not have success with that. Um, I found it really interesting that my friend's doctor did that because I was like, Every, everything from the research I did says Prozac, 10 milligrams cycled is the best option. So if you are gonna talk to your doctor about it and they bring it up, um, I would definitely suggest asking specifically about Prozac. But if you trust your doctor, trust, you know, trust your doctor. I always think it's best to trust your specialist until they give you a red flag not to. But I'm lucky that she suggested cycling and she said it's up to you. You track your cycles, start on the day you feel you're low and the day you know you start to get high again. And so that is what I did. And month one for me was November. So this is relatively new for me. Immediately, I was myself. I was like, oh my God, I'm normal me the whole month. And when I would start taking the SSRIs, the Prozac, it just made me feel the same way I felt when I was off the Prozac. It made me feel like my normal everyday version of Molly and I finally got to be me every single day. And so I did it November, December, January, and then as I said, I just started my cycle, so I did it February. So I've done Prozac cycling for four months now, and it has been extremely successful for me. Some months, it is more successful than others, and I think a big determining factor of that is number one, my stress levels. And number two, my alcohol consumption. I do find that if I drink alcohol while I'm on the Prozac, it is much less effective. So that is something I have become aware of. And during the 14, well, during, I usually take it between 10 to 12 days. During those 10 to 12 days, up to 14 days that I'm taking my Prozac, I limit to completely stop my alcohol consumption. And I find that that works best for me. Okay, just want to mention two things quickly that I want to clarify. Number one, acne. Prozac was treatment for my PMDD. It has not helped my acne. I am seeing a dermatologist and the acne uh, clearing up has been a result of a lot of skincare changes that I've been making, uh, as well as help from my dermatologist. That is something I will speak about in an entirely separate video related to skincare and hormonal acne. I still have hormonal acne, but it is a lot better. But again, it has nothing to do with my progesterone cream or my Prozac. It is completely different treatment. And if I was not doing that, it would still be horrific because my hormone issues that are underlying all of this are still present and that is something I'm still actively trying to work out and navigate moving forward. I would love a world in which I no longer have hormonal acne because my hormones are under control, but that's not where we're at right now. It is being controlled by other things. And the other thing is when it comes to Prozac, I wanna mention that I did have one noticeable side effect, but I only experienced it during my first month. So during the first time I took it in November for those 10 or 12 days that I was taking it, I did have pretty bad insomnia, which can happen with, I think most SSRIs. Typically it is a side effect that does go away with time. Um, for me, I experienced it the entire first time that I was on it. I only got about four hours of sleep a night. I slept literally every night from 11 PM till two or 3 AM. And then I was just wide awake. That said, even during the day, I wasn't tired. I couldn't nap. Um, so it was pretty bad insomnia and thankfully every month since then, I have not experienced that. And the only time that I found my Prozac to not be as effective was in the month of December because I was taking it right over the Christmas holiday and we're Irish. So even though I wasn't drinking heavily, I was having a drink or two with dinner each night. And typically I only drink one, maybe max two drinks a week. And sometimes I'll go 
a month without drinking just because I'm not going places where I'm drinking or I'm not in the mood. Um, so now what I do is because I specifically made the connection and correlation is that um, when I'm on my Prozac, I just tend to not drink. Or if I do, I only have one drink, period. So just want to mention those things. Not only me tracking my cycle, but the very close people around me being able to track my cycle is also something that's been really helpful. So my boyfriend independently tracks my cycle, um, which I think is important just generally for your partner to be on the same page as you when it comes to your cycle, especially if you are sexually active uh, and you're trying to avoid pregnancy, it's really important that you and your partner are on the same page about what part of your cycle you're on so you can avoid ovulation. Very important, um, especially for somebody like me who is not on birth control because I can't be. So my boyfriend does track my cycle along with me so he doesn't have to ask me where I am in my cycle. It's in his calendar, he tracks it, he knows. And he knows that if there is a day when I'm appearing more moody, he's like, oh, I know, I know you're like, you know, on day 20, like the other day I was really, really low um, the day before my period came. And he was like, I know this is day 27 for you and it must be like extra hard. So let me know if there's anything I can do. The luteal phase is hard for a lot of women, whether you have PMDD, whether you have hormonal issues or not. My PMDD and my hormone imbalances exacerbate my issues. It makes it harder, it makes it worse. But regardless of those, the luteal phase is a really hard phase for a lot of people. So I think it's really good to be more educated and to be more aware. And I've been loving seeing more content on TikTok from both women and men being like, here is what a typical 28 day cycle looks like. And this is like week over week, what you could expect to feel emotionally, to feel physically. And that's something I don't think was taught enough in school. And it's so, so, so important. So like. My parents, you know, they're around me a lot. My mom and I work together all the time. My dad works with me too. And it's important for them to know where I'm at so they can adjust how to better help me when they know I'm in a phase that's gonna be particularly difficult. And I try to cater my schedule around my peak week. I feel my best day seven or day like five to day 13. That is like my best version of me. I'm so high energy, I'm go, go, go. So. I love trying to plan to do a lot of work in that phase because I know I'm super productive, I know I'm super motivated, and then try to avoid doing work during other phases where I know I'm gonna be struggling more. Now, they do say that they don't believe there's really a huge link between hormone imbalance and PMDD from my understanding. Again, not an expert, but from my research, Although I will say there's extremely limited research being done on PMDD, um, but it seems like from the research they've done, they think it's more that people who experience PMDD are just more sensitive to the natural hormone drops. That said, I know I have hormone imbalance and I know that I've always struggled with my cycle. So it's hard for me to believe that they are completely separate issues. For me, they feel relatively interconnected, which is why I am still pursuing getting my hormones retested. I have not done that yet, so I am continuing with my hormone cream as per usual, and will be doing that until I can connect with a doctor to fully retest my hormones and get a baseline on where I am today with that, and also see if, if I can correlate any of those hormone changes with when my PMDD symptoms set on, because while there was maybe a bit of lead up to that, it was like a pretty extreme stark difference, wouldn't you say, mom? Oh yeah. It, it is so easy for me to pinpoint when I know that it began for me. I'll also say I feel extremely lucky that my doctor listened to me and took me seriously immediately. And sadly, I know that is not the case for everybody. I can say that prior to going to see her, like I was Googling every, like I was like, am I bipolar? Am I like, what is this? Because I knew that these extreme highs and extreme lows going back to back like this was not normal. Um, and I think the fact that I was able to track it with my cycle was a massive, massive help. And I know that not everybody can because I know that before I had hormone treatment, if I was still a regular, I would not have been able to do that. So I understand that I was in a lucky position that I was able to track it, which really helped. And I had a doctor that immediately took me seriously. So I did not have to suffer with this as long as I know some people do. I'll also say I've seen like an alarming rise in PMDD in the past three-ish years just within my own circle. I have like between three to five friends that are pursuing a PMDD diagnosis or who have recently been diagnosed with PMDD. Prior to the past few years, 
I have never in my life heard a single person talk about it or experience it. Most of my friends growing up like did not have extreme mood swings and emotional impacts with their cycle. They maybe had the average irritability or tearfulness, but nothing as extreme as so many of us are experiencing now, which also makes me question like what is causing this? Is it something we're consuming? Is it something we're eating? Is it something in the environment? And that's what makes me question like, is there, is there a hormone component to it? Because it just seems quite odd to me, the really big rise that I've seen in my own personal circle of this. But I do think it's good that, that more people are discussing it because the more we can discuss it, hopefully the more research that can be done and also hopefully the more people that can get help. So that's why I'm sharing this and I hope it has helped some of you to know maybe where to start, what to ask for, what to pursue. That's all I can really offer you as I continue on my journey because really, as I've said, I'm at the beginning of my journey. You know, I've just started. I'm pretty new to the diagnosis and I'm pretty new to treatment. Thankfully, for the most part, it has been an absolute life changer for me, an absolute godsend, as was the hormone treatment when I first started that. I'm really hoping in the next few months to like I said, pursue more hormone testing. And if anything interesting or relevant happens with that, I will definitely keep you guys up to date and inform you if you would like to hear about how my journey continues. But that's it for today's video. Until next time, you can click over here to watch the video about my protein S deficiency disorder, or you can click over here to hear my thoughts as a blind person on the show, Love is Blind.